Hi, Ryan here. Thanks so much for ordering the tabs. I really appreciate it. Uh, this song was it was interesting to work on. It was very fun, and I, I thought it was going to be easier than it was. Um, but some of the parts were pretty difficult to hear. But I think I came up with something that was pretty pretty good. So um, first thing I'll talk about is the tuning. It's in a drop tuning, as you might have noticed. So I've dropped it down to a drop D tuning. So you have. GBE. So standard drop D tuning. Now, the interesting thing about the tuning is that it's not, I, I don't know if it's me or if it's the song, but if you use a, a, an electronic tuner or a regular tuner to tune the instrument, you'll get a drop D that sounds um, a little more flat than this. So, and I was trying to work out what it was, but it seems to me that the tuning for this song is kind of in the middle of a flat drop D and a sharp drop D. It's kind of like a three-quarter tuning. It's very bizarre, but what you kind of have to do is tune tune the D strings uh, in tune with the song and then go from there because using a standard tuner is not going to work for whatever reason. I don't know if that was a decision by uh, Robert Plant or whoever wrote the song, but it's just very, very weird. So be careful when you're tuning it. Make sure you're lining it up. It is going to be in a drop D style tuning. Uh, but it might not line up specifically with you know, what your electronic tuner says or whatever it is that you use. So, um, second thing, I am going to finger pick the song, uh, primarily because I'm more comfortable finger picking, but also because I don't have a pick right now. But the song is picked uh, with an actual plectrum, so if you're comfortable doing that, go for it. Otherwise, you can get away with it using just your fingers as well. So, I sent you a PDF and a Guitar Pro version. I don't know if you have Guitar Pro, but if you do, it'll play front to back, front to end, front to back. The entire song will play through just as the song does in the YouTube link. And um, but if you're using the PDF file, you are going to have to pay attention to a lot of the repeats. There is a lot of repeats that I threw in. Um, it might get a little confusing at times, but pay close attention to them because they are um, they are perfect. So so the intro is um, just the standard riff. The, the song is going to, it's going to cover a few of the same riffs, and then once we learn like the main four, um, they'll just recycle throughout the whole song. So once you've nailed the main riffs, it's just about um, knowing the structure of the song, and then it becomes a lot easier. So the opening riff is this D shape. <laughs> He's doing this thing, it was, it's a subtlety, but instead of just playing the notes, um, what he's doing is sliding up to this, this fifth fret on the low D. So it's... So keep, listen for that, it's, it's very subtle, but it is there. So that repeats twice. Go to our first verse where he starts singing if I were a carpenter. And what we have is this. And that repeats twice. Now what you'll notice is that the first verse is actually four bars long, uh, four measures long. Um, but you you will notice in the tabs that I've sent you that I've got and I've, I wrote first verse above the uh, part. So first verse continues, and you're going to see a, bar, uh, a measure of four bars that repeat. So we play that twice. And we're going to go down to the next measure of four that repeat as well. Um, instead of just writing a measure of four that repeats four times, I split it up into two and two, and here's why. If you look at uh, the first verse, and we're looking at bar two of the first verse, which is... So that's the second bar of the first verse, and that first block of four. Um, and then if you look at the second bar of the next block of four, the next repeated section, which is still the first verse, mind you, uh, but remember we've split it into a repeat and then another repeat below it. The second bar of that you'll see is... So there's one difference, and the only, the only difference is that the last note played 
in that bar two, in the first repeat, it's an open D. In the second repeat, it's an open G. So it, the difference is... as opposed to... So another really subtle thing, and I didn't want to include this at first because I thought, well, it's probably just, you know, a product of the groove. He's just playing, and these are open notes that fit into the scale, so it doesn't matter what he's hitting. But the more I listen to the song, this is a consistent theme. At any time that this lick is played, there's a conscious effort to play one or one of those notes, the D or the open G. So. Um, that's the reason for this repeat. Instead of repeating the first verse four times and keeping it simple, uh, I've done repeat twice, repeat twice. So on the first two, you have... Just going back to the open D. Second two, you have... And then the rest is the same. So that's something to look out for. Again, not a big deal. If you're playing this for someone or with a band or whatever, no one will notice, but it is a product. It is actually in the song. Um, so that's the first verse. And then we're going to have... The first verse ends, when you play it through the first time, it ends with just a simple and then we repeat. But the second time, the very end of the first verse, we have this transition. So and that's how they transition into the pre-chorus, which is just like the intro. Now we're going to go into the chorus. The chorus spans this uh, progression of C, D, C, and D, and then back to an intro type riff. So now the chorus was the hardest of the entire song to actually hear what he was playing because there's a lot of violins, vocal harmonies, there's a lot of things that are going on so the guitar gets um, somewhat subdued. So what I wrote for you was what I believe to be, I mean the progression is, is right. Even if you were just to strum the, the C's and D's, it would sound great. But because the theme throughout the song is finger picking, I wanted to continue that. So in the beginning, I have a C shape and then a D shape and then another C shape. This time, I have. to a D shape with this hammer on the top. So that's the, I guess, the main part of the chorus, the C, D, C, D. Um, those two, those last two bars, the... Again, it's not to say that those are the exact notes he's playing, but with the combination of the guitar, the violin, the vocals, um, these are the sounds that I was hearing. So. Um, especially if you're playing this just by yourself, just an acoustic and maybe voice. Um, this will be a good way to capture kind of those extra sounds with these little licks. So that's why I wrote them the way they did. And then we have the, the chorus continues with the I give you my, whatever the lyric is. And again, right there, that hammer on. He only goes back to the D string there instead of the D. Now this is kind of a chorus outro, but this part we get this cool uh, lick, and what I wrote for you is mimicking the violin part as well, and that is the... So that... Uh, that's going to happen later on in the song as well, that's kind of an outro chorus -y theme, which is neat. Um, so it's going to play it's going to play four times uh, in two different ways. The first way is and the second way is so those are our two playing them, you know, one, two, one, two. And now keep in mind though that the second time you play this one the you'll see that I've written second verse right above that, that part. And that's because he starts singing when this is being played. If I were... It starts right there, if I were a carpenter. And then right back into the uh, original verse shape. 
So it's interesting. In that sense, he started the first verse by playing just the regular D, like the intro. But here, he's beginning the second verse with this lick. So keep an ear out for that. Um, I think that might happen again later, but then we just have basically a repeat of the first, a repeat of the first verse. Now you're going to notice that it's not structured the same way that I structured the first and second verse, which is um, four bars repeat and then another four bars repeat. And the reason for that is because of what I just talked about. The because he starts the, f the second verse with that lick, I, I couldn't put a repeat sign there because that would mean he would have to go back and start the second verse again with that lick, and he doesn't. He goes right back to the first verse and mimics it almost exactly. So it's only the one time that he plays this to start a verse. Other than that, it's the same as the first. So again, in the second verse, the first two times you're playing it, on the hammer-on section, we're hammering on and returning back to the D string, so... And the second two times you play the second verse, we're hammering on and going to the G. So that, that happens again, and then we're going to have this... I wrote second pre-chorus, it's just an extension of the verse, but it's just a one bar of... And then straight into the second chorus. So there's that lick again, kind of the outro chorus. The... And in this sense, this is where the bridge begins. And it's hit, he hits this open D chord, um, an eighth note before the one count. So it's. happens right before the one. So. And this, this holds over for eight. And now there's a little violin interlude, but only have, it only occurs for two um, rests of four. Now we're at the bridge where the guitar comes back in. And uh, take note of what I've written above the bars, and that is that Right, this is the bridge, the parentheses are a repeat of the introduction. Very literally, it's a repeat of the intro. We're kind of playing the song start, starting from the beginning. And then the bridge, a repeat of the first verse, bridge, a repeat of the second verse. Again, the only difference is the hammer-on. And um, then I've written final chorus. Final chorus is the same as the other choruses. You've got your four bar chorus. This is the same as it has been. And again, the outro kind of chorus. And you're, you're playing kind of a repeat of the verse. He goes back to singing If I Was a Carpenter. And then this is just a very weird series. Like I said at the beginning, um, once you've learned the main sort of riffs in the song, it's, all, it's just about knowing the song structure because at this point, um, it's, it's really just a lot of mixing up the verse riffs, the chorus outro riffs, the chorus riffs. So you have this. So again, just a hodgepodge of all the riffs we've already learned. Um, then there's an outro of four. Four of the uh, kind of intro type licks. So, uh, let me just uh, rephrase. Towards the very end of the song, we get this. And that's the transition. And here he's going. And this is, you'll, you'll notice that I've written, I've put a repeat sign, but I've wrote three times. And that is because the fourth time, it carries over into just... 
So the three times is two, three, and the end. So that's the outro of the song. Now, I will, I can't stress this enough. Um, I, I urge you to look at the tabs and and learn the riffs as they are written. And if I mean, I assume you know the song pretty well already, so it probably won't be as much of a challenge for you to get the song structure down as it was for me. I had never heard the song before ever, so learn each riff a as it's written because it is written very accurate. I think I nailed it. So uh, learn them, and then once you know all the riffs. Um, compare them to the song. You can play this straight through if you're comfortable reading repeats and uh, the structure of sheet music. <clears throat> and um, yeah, learn the riffs and play them with the song and you'll get a feel for all these sort of transition-y type parts and the subtleties that are here and there. I have a feeling you already know the song so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, but so that that's it. I want you to uh, take a look at this and I tend to ramble a little bit a little bit in these videos because obviously I know what I want to say but sometimes it doesn't get conveyed that well so I want you to tell me if there was any parts that I was unclear about or things that you would like me to go over further and I have no problem sending over another video focusing on something in specific or even the entire song again just in more detail so uh, let me know shoot me a message and I appreciate the order I hope you enjoy the tabs thanks a lot